Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to the DCS News for the 6th of April 2024. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed that, my most recent tutorial on the F-15E Strike Eagle, all about the auto acquisition modes of the radar. Um, I'm going to be continuing the series on the F-15 with next week, us starting on a video all about the AMRAM and how to uh, make use of that using the radar. Uh, so that should be a bit of a laugh. And uh, yeah, of course, I've been away for a week. I was on vacation in Scotland, so we've missed uh, one regular DCS news stream. So today we're going to have two newsletters to look at, uh, and then we have a bunch of other bits and bobs. It has uh, been a rather busy and interesting week, but we'll get to that soon. Uh, so welcome to the stream, Sim Taylor. Welcome, Mark S. Uh, Whiskey Dale, Charts, uh, Byron Farrow, uh, Irish Pat, Tog. Uh, JP Gibbons, John Bloor, Storm Kimbari, uh, Eagle Wings. Welcome everybody to the stream. As always, I am monitoring chat, uh, so feel free to ask questions and make comments there. Uh, and yes, as um, um, as Mark S says, uh, the patch has been delayed. Although I, I cover that a little bit later. Uh, welcome, Nico. Uh, Eagle Wings. Welcome back from Scotland. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Mark S. Bits and Bobs, Nuts and Guts. Yes, exactly. Thingamajigs and what's it? All the, all the good stuff. All the good stuff. Welcome, Channel Right. Welcome to the stream. Uh, only Napam. Hello, hello. Everyone's filtering in just now. Fantastic. It's good to have you all aboard. Um, so yeah, let's, let's jump straight into it. I do have <laughs> Sim Taylor vacation. How could you? I have to take time off occasionally. I, I'm a, kind of a workaholic, but I, I do like to take a bit of time off from, from time to time. But let's jump straight into the first of the two uh, Eagle Dynamics newsletters that we have. Uh, we've got the one from the 29th of March, the earlier one first. Uh, Dear fighter pilots, partners, and friends, it is with great pleasure we bring you the DCS Afghanistan pre-purchase. This vast and varied landscape will provide endless mission possibilities and it rep uh, it presents our latest terrain technologies offering the highest detail ever dcs afghanistan is offered with a special 30 percent discount at 48 dollars and 99 centorinos uh, during the pre-purchase phase the early access release price will be set at 20 percent off or 55 dollars and 99 cents until the final release we also offer the option to purchase just the southwest region at 23 dollars and 99 cents within pre-purchase watch the trailer now and check out the details below this one is confused people i'm not gonna i'm not gonna name any names but i'm aware of at least one person who purchased both the Southwest region and the entire map, not realizing that you only need to buy one or t'other. Um, so yes, uh, watch out for that one. But uh, let's let's jump straight in and take a little look at the Afghanistan trailer. Sans sound, because I don't want to get copyright struck. Uh, but uh, this is looking already very, very impressive. Uh, and Eagle Dynamics hinting that it's another newer iteration of their terrain tech. Uh, I assume because of the uh, the diversity of, of kind of elevations, um, they might have some new tech for the meshes, I don't know. But it's looking very, very nice. Uh, talk, talk about a drama llama release, that Afghan map. <laughs> oh, uh-huh, yes. Um, but uh, this is looking great, and of course we're getting some uh, another chance to take a look at the Chinook here, which is very, very nice to see. I wonder what more we're going to learn about the Chinook this year. Hopefully some exciting stuff. Some Apaches flying over. Yes. Very, very impressive. Yeah, Afghanistan, of course, will be interesting because you've got these these areas of high elevation. Uh, you get the mountainous areas, and then you've got these uh, lowlands, which are very, very flat. Um, so it's it's going to be... Interesting and diverse. Um, yeah, very much looking forward to this. Off we go. Things go boom. And also, this is this is them showing off the uh, the, the tech where the explosions can actually wibble the, uh, the foliage, which is nice. That's the technical term, by the way. It's it's wibbling. Uh, there was also a shot of a, a Harrier with an RAF screen. Um, skin a little bit earlier there which is nice to see whoosh 
and an A10. Of, yeah, there'll be lots for the A10s to do in Afghanistan. Digital Combat Simulator Afghanistan. Pre-order now and coming in June 2024. Very exciting. Uh, channel right, I've pre-purchased the Afghanistan map. First time I've pre-purchased. Sim Taylor, got the entire map. Why? I don't know. Got two helos I can't fly and a steady diet of coin and kaz doesn't really appeal to me. But I got it. <laughs> John Bloor, Afghanistan. I like it. That's what we're going to call it from now on. Uh, to be honest, I thought it was mostly a communication issue. The idea is fairly sound. Uh, Tog, lots of Abrams in that video could mean a high fidelity someday. And John Bloor, at Sim Taylor, I guess it's approaching it uh, it has a sandbox for whatever you like it to be. Yes, exactly. You can do whatever the hell you want and nobody can stop you. And then, uh, returning to the newsletter, the Joint Task Force Francophone is announcing the beginning of the second Winter on Fire tournament, which is a full 2v2 PvP and BVR event. Uh, that's uh, correctly pronounced Piver and Beaver. Uh, with 16 of the best French teams, elimination phase, different fighting areas and different scenarios for 15 days. JTFF Twitch. Thank you for your passion and support. Uh, very, very good. So yeah, the DCS Afghanistan map available uh, for pre-purchase now. Uh, 20 years of the war on terror and the Soviet operations of the 1980s place Afghanistan as one of the most important combat theatres of the past half century. Few war zones have ever seen more A-10C, H-64D, F-16C, F-A-18C, C-H-47F, M-I-24P, M-I-8MTV2 and SU-25 sorties. Other letters of the alphabet are also available. Uh, the entire map of Afghanistan is, uh, sorry, the entire map of Afghanistan and small portions of neighboring countries will be available. I wonder if we're going to get some Pakistan. That would be nice. Um, showcasing our latest map technologies at a superb level of detail and fidelity. Um, DCF Afghanistan. Yeah, we already know the pricing. Uh, we've also decided to make this map more accessible by offering users the option of purchasing regions separately. Southwest, east, uh, east and north, each region will be offered as a separate release at approximately three months intervals. Today, you can pre-purchase DCS Southwest Afghanistan, otherwise known as Afghanistan, says John, uh, for the price. Um, in June 2024, that will be set at 29.99. Uh, DCS East Afghanistan and DCS North Afghanistan will be offered for purchase as and when they're ready later this year. Uh, the early access release of DCS Afghanistan will focus on a detailed southwestern and encompassing 12 airfields, inc including Kandahar and Herat. Whilst the entire map is under development, the southwest region is currently the most complete. The second region to be released will be the eastern region and finally the northern region. Please keep in mind that even if you purchase only one region, you will still be able to play online across the whole map, but uh, the non-purchased regions will be in lower detail. Uh, we are truly excited to offer you this monumental map and to give you the chance of purchasing at, in stages at more bite-sized prices, uh, should you so choose. Uh, John Bloor, that's what we tell ourselves when the buyer's remorse kicks in. Uh, Tog, maybe DCS uh, joined work with eSIM games. Mm. Uh, charts, can't believe they missed out the Harrier AV-8B in that list. I'm with you, Charts. That's uh, that's sickening that they haven't mentioned it. The, you know, of course, the, the RAF was, um, was operating in the area a lot, um, mainly with the, with the Harrier. Um... John Bloor, Gazelle, was also very active in Afghan. I didn't know that. That's 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 cool. Uh, as was the Hind. Still is, supposedly. Yeah, well, the, the Hind wasn't... No, actually, was the Hind in the list? Yeah, MI-24P. Hind was in the list. Okay, so key features at early access. The entirety of Afghanistan with the south, south, <laughs> southwestern portion available in high detail at early access. I'm obviously not used to doing all this talking. High resolution terrain mesh, textures and objects that look great from low to high altitude. Numerous authentically modeled air bases such as Kandahar and Herat, they mentioned 12. Um, diverse terrain ranging from towering mountains to vast deserts. 
uh, recreate battles spanning the last 40 years, densely populated towns and villages. Uh, the main Afghanistan area, let me see if I can get this right, is 1,449,216 square kilometers. That's quite a lot. And then it lists the other ones. Um, they're modeling it, uh, what it looked like between 2008 and two th uh, 2010. Uh, advanced normal map technology for mid and long range landscape detail, improved close up surface material for better detail, highly detailed city scenes, buildings, vegetation, static cars and more, highly detailed airfield scenes, unique objects and cultural monuments and highly detailed road network. So uh, this is very, very exciting indeed. And if we click on this, it takes us straight to the pre-purchase area. So there you go. Very, very exciting indeed. Oh, DCS Afghanistan. Darth Urso. Buyer's remorse? I own multiple RASBAM aircraft like most of you. I bet the update being delayed means we get to fly our aircraft for a few more days. Um, I, I would imagine RASBAM's aircraft are not going anywhere. Eagle Wings. I was hoping the Cola map would make it out before the Afghan map. Seems the Cola map release is still far away. Uh, they were saying that they're they're getting close to a, a, a release, and I would expect it this year, but I don't know when. Um, talk only the last 40 years, bleh. <laughs> yeah, true. Stuart McLean, uh, welcome. Welcome to the stream. So, uh, moving on, we have Joint Task Force BVR Tournament, Beaver Tournament. Uh, the Winter on Fire Tournament is organised each year by the Joint Task Force Francophone, JTFF, for the French DCS community. Bonjour, everyone. Uh, Thrustmaster, Heatblur, Razbam, and Materiel.net <coughs> will all be contributing. Best teams' prizes are up for grabs. The event will be covered on the JTFF Twitch channel with broadcasters. Please follow the tournament and note that there will be viewer gifts. Very exciting. Excuse me. Um, John Blue or Polychop were actually poking around their Discord about a small paid upgrade to the Gazelle so they could do the British AH1 variant justice. I would pay that. I would absolutely pay that. Let it be known that I would happily give Polychop some money for exactly that. Uh, Nico, I too admit uh, being a whale. Uh, I have a few moments of sales frenzy. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, we all do. We're all the same, I think. So uh, that was last week's newsletter and the, the Afghan map vi uh, video um, dropped at the same time. Moving into this week, we have the 5th of April uh, newsletter, this having dropped yesterday. Dear fighter pilots, partners and friends, the initial set of answers from the 15th anniversary Q&A presented by Matt Wags Wagner, otherwise known as Daddy Wags on this channel, is now available for your enjoyment here. We hope that this video gives you a better understanding of our plans and goals regarding game performance in 2024 and beyond. Answers on additional topics will release steadily over the coming months. Thanks again to all of you who took the time to participate. We are truly grateful. We're thrilled to share our latest development in the F-16C Viper's complex INS and GPS uh, improvements. It's important to note that not all features have been added and more enhancements and bug fixes will be coming soon. Uh, Fox 3 Managed Solutions Group is running a DCS tournament in support of the K9s for Warriors charity. We encourage you to participate in the event as all proceeds will go to the cause. Please check out the details below. Thank you for your passion and support. Very exciting. Hey, John Blair, uh, think like Black Shark 3. If you already own it, it's a $10, $15 upgrade package. Count me in. That sounds fantastic. Uh, um, yeah. The thing is, I'm trying to think now, the British variant didn't have the autopilot and I think had less powerful engines. Am I right? Uh, I need to go and check on that. So it, it, in some ways it might be a less capable version, uh, but it at least would be authentic for British operations. Yeah, uh, John Blair says, I think it would help fund even more upgrades to the module in general. Yeah, I'm on board for that. I think the Gazelle is great, uh, especially, you know, obviously way more so in its current condition rather than how it was on release. Uh, but I think Polychop have done a really good job of, of bringing it up to date and uh, making it a really worthwhile module. Still super excited for the Kiwa, but we're getting to that a little bit later in the stream, so don't worry. 
15th anniversary Q&A videos performance. We hope that our approach to packaging your questions works well and that you will enjoy Matt's performance. Over the coming months, we will be providing further videos covering your 2,000 plus questions. As you can imagine, quite a few of the issues raised have similarities and hence we have cate uh, categorised them in subject matter blocks, published on YouTube and on our forums. Enjoy! Check out the first video on performance questions. Written and additional answers can be found on the forum here. Thank you for your patience and support. Well, let's uh, let's jump straight in and actually have a little peek at this. Uh, I watched this myself a little bit earlier. Uh, I think it's it's quite nice. Uh, it's looking really really cool. But um, uh, I think there's th there's a few questions here which are kind of like, oh, when are you going to do blah blah blah? And then it, it it's the case that it has already been done. So I, I don't know if these questions are just out of date um, or if people haven't noticed some of the work that uh, Eagle Dynamics have already done with regards to performance. Um, you know, there's some people asking, oh, when are we going to get DLSS? And it's like, well, they made a big thing up about this at the time. Did you not notice? But uh, yeah, it might, it might be the case uh, that it's uh, a little bit out of date. Uh, what's the difference on the Army Air Corps one? Yep, Mr. Yeti, I, I've, uh, well, th this is my recollection, so uh, take it with a pinch of salt. John Bluer, Star Streaks. Mm. Uh, Eagle Wings, I wonder if the scenario for air-to-air -air combat for aircraft in the Afghan map, most likely more of an air-to-ground combat, big operational map for the heli modules. But th the reality is, of course, you can do whatever you like with the map. Um, yeah, you can do whatever you like. Um... So anyway, I'm going to leave this running in the background just now. Uh, a bunch of people ask a bunch of questions, and uh, Matt Wagner answers them. Uh, so yeah, it's a pretty good series. I'm glad that they're doing this and kind of engaging with the community in this way. It's uh, it's a bit of fun, and it's always good to see Matt Wagner on the uh, on the video. It's good. Mister Yeti, did you see the Mark One retirement flight of the Apache around the south the other week? I did not. Uh, Mark S, the Gazelle variant is called the AH-1. Well, that's not confusing. Well, you know, that's that's British nomenclature. Um, so, yeah, it's not a Cobra. It's it's a Gazelle. Pink Floyd, just walked in. Afternoon, time for coffee in DCS. Fantastic, welcome aboard. John Bloor, small thing. His background has nice lighting, is nightly furni nicely furnished, good camera lighting, and mic. Uh, we're going to see a lot more of Wags, I think. Oh, so you're 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 thinking they've specially set him up for this kind of thing? Well, they are going to do a series of these videos. Um, so yes, I think that's almost certainly the case. Sometimes in the past his audio was not amazing, so it's it's nice to see that they've upgraded his setup here. Darth Urso, comments have uh, were turned off, uh, and this was a tone deaf video to distract from kerfuffle over the last week. I'm not spending more money with them until there's more transparency. Uh, well, th th this this video almost certainly would have been recorded before uh, the recent excitement, uh, and they've been planning to do this for... Oof, when, when was it they started asking people for the questions? It must have been at least a couple of months ago. Um, so, no, I don't <laughs> I don't think it's the case that this is designed to, to hide anything. Um, it's just uh, just the timing that they happen to have released it at the same time. Sim Taylor, at John Bluer, I think he, uh, he's uh, taking a larger PR role for ED. Saw him in another video, I believe. Uh, yeah, well, he's been turning up on, on live streams and things like that. Uh, so it's, um, yeah, I, I think he is actually trying to be a bit more visible. So yeah, anyway, this is a nice video. It's nice to see that um, you know they're they're engaging with the community and answering these questions. Um, I don't know how much value there is in the video versus just answering the questions on the forum, but I do like it. It's 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 nice to see uh, you know wags on screen and, and talk about all these different things. So yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, anyway, uh, I'll leave it there because uh, you can all watch this video yourself, and it's not super exciting to just watch it in the background while I talk. <laughs> Ryan McGee, does anyone think Wags looks like Odo from DS9? <laughs> um, maybe slightly? Only very slightly. <laughs> but okay. Uh, Mark S, uh, he self admits that he isn't excited about the PR role. I think he was voluntold. <laughs> I don't know. Like he, he's very good when he does these uh, these videos showing off new features. Like I, I always appreciate uh, you know uh, Wagner showing us around new stuff in the Apache and so on when it's going to drop. 
better than Quark. <laughs> Channel right, it's always reassuring to see wags. Uh, Mr. Yeti, he doesn't look like I expected. I imagined a Dot Chuckles, but with, but with a big beard? But Dot Chuckles does have a big beard, so you're just describing Dot Chuckles. Um, <laughs> oh, dear. Yes, Pink Floyd, his voice is as smooth as Celine Dion. Mmm, yes, fantastic. Anyway, um, <laughs> F-16C Viper, this is the meat of uh, of the um, <clears throat> the newsletter. <laughs> Wax doesn't need the stress, says Arlene's junkie. Yeah, I'm sure he has plenty of other stuff to do, uh, but I am always happy to see him, so it's nice that he posts stuff. F-16C Viper Development Report, F-16C INS and GPS System Overview. The navigation system on the DCS F-16C Viper is a complicated mixture of technical solutions that are intended to supply the avionics with coordinates, velocity, and angles uh, that are characterized by precision, availability, integrity, and autonomy. This sounds like they took it straight from the, the Northrop Grumman... Um, Cal um, catalog. Um, this is achieved by the cooperative work of the inertial navigation system and global positioning system, whose navigation inputs are processed through a CalMAN filter in the modular mission computer. Let's discuss each of the components in detail. Um... <laughs> oh dear. John Bloor. Uh, when he's uh, been on with uh, Mover and Gonky, he's all friendly and softly spoken, whilst they jo joke around like big kids. Uh, it's a great dynamic. Uh, they should get dudes like Tricker, Casmo, Mover, etc. to co host. Hmm. Yeah. Tog, I gotta head off. I'll have to watch the rest of this later. Don't forget to pimp that VAF. Don't you worry, I will never forget. Um, INS, the Inertial Navigation System, is an autonomous device that performs dead reckoning of aircraft coordinates by measuring the accelerations and then integrating them twice whilst taking into account the aircraft's orientation in space. The F-16 knows where it is at all times because... No, that's not this one. Uh, the latter is obtained from the F-16 ring laser gyros. This type of INS is termed strap-down, as there are no rotating parts. Basically, INS consists of three accelerometers, each uh, for one of the orthogonal axes, and three gyros. The main features of the INS improvements are autonomy, as it doesn't require any external signals to do dead reckoning. Stability, in a short period of time, 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, it, it achieves stability, I think is what they meant to say there. Noticeable error accumulation over longer periods of time based on the physics of the dead reckoning, together with the integration of accelerations to update speed and the integration of position to update coordinates, the small errors at the level of accelerations that are introduced by accelerometer noises and imperfect alignment are integrated twice as well. Um... What's the VAF? R asks Mark S. The Virtual Air Force. We'll be talking about that later. Don't you worry. Uh, tea Kettle Barbecue. Apologies for my tardiness. Don't you worry. Don't you worry, sir. I'm glad that you're aboard. Uh, and of course, as always, I am uh, monitoring chat. So feel free to post questions and just shoot the shit with us there. It's always good. Um, as Tom Kimbari. Yep. Come join the VAF Discord. Fly with cool folks like Deep and chat about all kinds of fun topics from food to music to current events. So there you go. There's a link to the Discord from Storm Can Barry. <laughs> Mr. Yeti, I've no idea what you're saying. It's just words. It's just words. It's all words. Um, furthermore, the larger these errors are, the faster they accumulate due to the so-called integral correction of INS, which updates the local Earth gravitational force vector with the coordinates and adds them into the relative angles of the G vector. Now I'm starting to lose track of what I'm saying. Another distinctive feature of INS is the Schuller oscillation with a period of 84.4 minutes. Due to the integral correction algorithm mentioned above, the INS behaves like a pendulum. In ideal circumstances, it stays in equilibrium while the aircraft moves along the Earth, while uh, when coordinates errors appear, it displaces the pendulum from the resting point and it starts oscillating. The larger the errors are, the larger the amplitude of the introduced oscillations. That's why one may notice the INS errors get smaller at a rate of 84.4 minutes once airborne. Okay. Um, GPS, Global Positioning System, measures the aircraft position by measuring the signal propagation delay from GPS satellites to the receiver. This is one that I do actually understand in quite a bit of detail. Uh, satellite orbits are precisely known 
using the Almanac. Uh, the exact positions of the satellites are computed according to... Oh, that, they already said that. See, I know some of this. Uh, according to an Almanac that is transmitted on the same GPS radio signals. That's why GPS needs a couple of minutes after the cold start to, uh, to obtain the Almanac. Uh, the moments of the signal transmission are... Uh, are also known and are defined by very precise atomic clock on board the satellite. Thus, in an ideal case, if the GPS signals are propagated through space with the constant speed of light as they do in a vacuum, the receiver could precisely determine its position by intersecting the surfaces of the equidistant radio signal delays from the satellites. You may think of it as spheres with centres located at the satellite's positions, although it's a bit more complicated in real life. However, there are two significant factors that prevent us from obtaining the ideal point of the surface intersections, the ionospheric delay and multipath. Um, both add unknown time to the actual signal propagation time. Multipath happens when the receiver is placed relatively near the ground and the signal may be reflected from the ground objects that results in the signal's edges degrading. This is similar to an echo in the mountains, where it's too hard to tell one word from another. When such delays are unexpectedly added to the receiver, the precise navigation solution gets lost and the output coordinate gets noisy. That's where military GPS signals help to get a better signal resolution by the use of so-called P-codes, and the usage of dual frequency helps to eliminate the unknown ionospheric delay. Yeah, we're getting some really, really complicated stuff here. Integrated solution, the Kalman filtering. To summarize the above, we have two navigation systems, both of which have flaws. INS accumulates errors over time. GPS is noisy and prone to interference due to natural factors like multi-factor, uh, multipath and ionospheric delay and to enemy jamming and spoofing. Here is the good news there. Uh, there is a way to avoid these flaws with the Kalman filter. It takes GPS and INS coordinates together with speeds uh, as its input. The Kalman filter is a great algorithm that's able to get the maximum precision even out of measurements far from ideal. And it takes the best aspects from both systems, the stability and autonomy of INS and the precision of GPS to obtain an integrated navigational solution that is both stable and precise. Furthermore, the Kalman filter knows, in terms of mathematical equations, the dynamic properties of the aircraft that is moving through space. If the aircraft is moving, it predicts where the aircraft will be in the next filter step. That is why it's called recursive, and the filter won't let erroneous GPS signals degrade the precision of the output navigational solution. Moreover, it's able to dynamically change its measurements versus predicted weights to adjust to a degraded navigation precision of any input. Whoa! The F-16 does always know where it is. Big gulp. Fantastic. <laughs> Pink Floyd, Stormbirds turned eight yesterday. We should wish Colin a happy birthday. We indeed do. Stormbirds.blog uh, is a fantastic resource. And happy birthday, Colin. Uh, John Blur, it's like that video of the turbo encabulator, which uses six hydrocoptic marzal veins... In, yes, yes, they're laminated and delaminated in a certain way to cause the something something. Yeah, that's an amazing video. Um, <laughs> John Bloor and an, oh, oh dear, an ambifacient lunar wave wane shaft to prevent unwanted side fumbling. Nobody wants unwanted side fumbling. I know I don't. Multipass. <laughs> oh dear. Mr. Yeti, love myself a Calman filter. Um, <laughs> never leave home without one. Fantastic. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed that. I'm sorry about the 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 word spaghetti. Uh, I'm just reading it as it's here on the page. That you, know, this does look like they're they're going to really dive though into the um kind of complex uh factors involved in simulating the INS and the GPS and the F16. That they apparently did very much the same kind of thing uh when they were developing Black Shark 3. That's one of the big things that they did was to fully simulate its uh, GLONASS and INS system. So uh, I'm glad to see them applying the same kind of tech to the F16. We're going to get a far more interesting simulation here. I understood every word of that says channel, right? Uh yeah. Also, did I hear SRS? Uh, I don't know, John Blur. Did you? Uh, when did I say SRS? 
Anyway, Fox 3 Solutions Charity Tournament. This April, Fox 3 is thrilled to announce a heart-pounding, adrenaline fueled DCS tournament that's not just about showcasing your skills, but also about rallying our incredible community to a great cause, supporting the heroes at Canines for Warriors. Learn more about the Canines for Warriors mission. Mark your calendars. The battlefield opens from the 19th of April to the 21st, 2024. Prepare for three days of intense aerial challenges, camaraderie, and epic battles that will test your mettle. Please note that this is a charity event with paid attendance and fantastic prizes. Fox 3's Ultimate DCS Skills Showdown is here. Thank you again for your passion and support. And um, yes, I think uh, that's that's everything from the two newsletters that we had, uh, but we have more exciting stuff to cover in just a moment. Uh, uh, Sim Taylor, Deepak, get an aspirin. I think you hurt yourself on that one. It was tough. That was tough going, but uh, we got there in the end. We got there. <laughs> Sprained a frontal lobe, just trying to make sense of it. Um, so yes, in other exciting stuff, uh, we have, um, what would you call this exactly? It's like a teaser video that Polychop have released. It's a YouTube short, so forgive the horrible uh, orientation, but uh, here we have a nice short video all about the OH58D Kiowa Warrior. Uh, this is nice. It's nice to see uh, more content from Polychop all about the Kiowa, and uh, this looks absolutely fantastic. There's some really, really good shots here. The Kiowa's collaborating with a tens. Uh, firing off hellfires, firing the gun, yep, using the cameras. It, it looks like it's coming along. It looks like it's coming along. I hope we get to play with this soon. Um, I will obviously be covering this once it comes out. Um, looking really, really nice. Uh, again, I've, I've muted it because I don't want to get copyright struck. There's some nice music and other bits and bobs going on in this one. So go and watch it for yourself. It's well worth a peek. We don't see any Apaches in the video, though. Just uh, uh, just the, the Kiowa and some A-10s. But nonetheless, very, very cool indeed. Very cool. So, yep, that's everything from that one. Um, Pink Floyd, Fox 3 Solutions is making a skin editor so you can design one yourself, but they want to charge $15 per skin. Hmm, interesting. Uh, Irish Pat 64 Phantom on patch day. What do you think? Um, I suspect no. Uh, they were <laughs> they were saying they were saying that it was probably going to be more like end of May. Um, so yeah, I, I think not this patch, but the next one. I would suspect. Mark S. I find shorts annoying. That's why I go commando. Says Sim Taylor. Ah, sensible chuckle. Well done. <laughs> Mr. Yeti, do you think the Kiowa will communicate with the Apache situational awareness display? Um, I don't know. Um, the thing is, they're they're implementing L2 mums, uh, and I think they're also implementing the data link. So I would suspect maybe eventually. We haven't really heard them say very much about this. Uh, that said, there is, if I remember correctly, there is a frequently asked questions area. Um on Polychop's part of the Eagle Dynamics forums. So let's see, do we have anything here? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I thought there was an FAQ here somewhere, uh, but I'm not seeing it. Let's have a look. I'm, I'm gonna have a very, very quick, oh, here we go, FAQ. Right, here we go, here we go, very exciting. Um, Will there be a data link or similar? So actually, let me let me bring this up on screen here. The improved data modem is a similar system that allows for transmission of data between player aircraft. This includes, but is not limited to the following features. Free text messaging, target sharing, and remote hellfire missions. The OH-58D is also equipped with the level 2 manned-unmanned system, L2MUMS, which allows for video and data transmission between player-controlled OH-58Ds and AI UAVs. So they do not mention the Apache. However, this is the same data modem that the Apache has. So I guess if there was some collaboration between Polychop and um, ED, they could make this work. Uh, I'm just going to very quickly check if... Yeah, no, they don't. They don't spell it out, uh, and they only mention collaborating between other Kiowas and UAVs, AI UAVs, for that matter. Um, so I don't know. 
John Bloor. So what's confusing is both aircraft have what's described as an improved data modem, but it doesn't clearly state if that's only Kiowa to Kiowa. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, certainly in the FAQ, they spell out that it will work Kiowa to Kiowa and it will work between Kiowas and UAVs. They do not mention the Apache. However, I believe, but I could be wrong, but I believe in the real world, they do talk to each other. I believe that the Kiowa and the Apache do communicate over their data link. So uh, let's see. Let's see. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. That would be very, very cool. Uh, and yeah, of course, the other important questions. Can I shoot the M4 out of the door? Yes. Is there going to be multi-crew? Yes. <laughs> uh, which version of the Kiowa are we getting? Uh, OH-58D in brackets R, CDS-4, dating from around 2016. So this is a very, very modern aircraft. Um, yeah, very, very cool. Very, very cool. Anyway, uh, that's everything for that one. And yeah, speaking of the patch, we had this on Wednesday from Big Nui. Um, next planned update is now the 10th of April. Um, during final checks, QA found a regression in Spotting Dot's system and the DCS F-16C INS. It has issues, apparently. We are working on fixes now and we'll need time to test everything again after fixes are deployed. Apologies for the delay and thank you for your patience. So, uh, yes, a little bit delayed, but 10th of April, that's uh, that's what? That's not far. Uh, that is, yeah, Wednesday. So rather than this Wednesday, it's next Wednesday. That's not terrible. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Channel right. I was wondering how that 3D mission editor was coming along that was touted a few months ago. It looked very exciting. Yes. Um, not heard anything about it, so could not comment. Uh, not heard anything about it at all. Uh, so on to other news, and this is kind of the the big thing that was happening in the last few days. The uh, yes, the the big drama. Um, I'll I'll start off by simply reading out the statements. So uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Rasbam Discord. So this was this was posted by uh, Ron Zambrano, who is the CEO of Rasbam. Uh, Dear customers and community, you may have noticed that the latest Rasbam announcement does not include a changelog or any updates for our products. We would like to inform you that until further noticed, all support for Rasbam developed aircraft modules is on hold. This suspension encompasses, but is not limited to, bug fixes and updates. We want to reaffirm our unwavering commitment to this exceptional community, our current customers and prospective clients. Unfortunately, due to circumstances completely beyond our control, we are temporarily unable to continue our work at this time. Our team, a group of highly skilled and professional developers, is first and foremost made up of dedicated individuals. They invest not only their expertise, but also their personal dedication and, sac and sacrifice into crafting our products. For many, this work provides essential supplementary income or even constitutes their primary livelihood. We are hopeful for a swift resolution so that we can resume our normal operations. However, until these issues are resolved, we will not be issuing any updates about our products. We ask for your understanding during this challenging period, a situation that Rasbam simulations did not seek and which has previously affected other parties, for example, heat blur simulations. Uh, we've been patient, perhaps too patient, waiting for a resolution from the responsible parties. Now we find it necessary to take a stand and await a practical solution to this deadlock. I want to extend my heartfelt thanks to fellow third-party developers. Their support, once aware of the relevant facts, have been overwhelming. Thank you for elevating DCS to new heights. It truly wouldn't be the remarkable experience it is without your contributions. The suspension will remain in effect until the significant issues between Eagle Dynamics and Rasbam simulations are resolved to our mutual satisfaction. Once these issues have been addressed, we will resume our standard practice of bug fixing, updates, and upgrades, just as we have since our inception as developers for DCS. We hope this resolution results in a more stable and optimistic future for DCS and all third-party developers. Best regards, Ron Zambrano. So, um, oh, Sim Taylor, any further word in the next Heat Blur video for the Phantom? Uh, well, they did put up that gameplay one um, for for just a few minutes and then took it down, uh, which was actually just a rickroll. <laughs> it was funny. Uh, Pink Floyd, it was mentioned that the Rasbam drama might be delaying the Phantom because Heat Blur doesn't want to hand it over. 
Uh, I've not heard anything about that, and that's certainly not what Heatbler have most recently said. Uh, you know, the most recent things they were saying was that it's it's delayed because they have these serious bugs with the uh, with the Heatbler UI. Um, Stuart McLean, drama is for wives, and is highly overrated. <laughs> oh dear, Mark S. Was it written April first? No, no. So yeah, this 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 dropped on the fourth of April. Um, so just a couple of days ago. <clears throat> so uh, very shortly thereafter, there was, of course, a reply from Eagle Dynamics. I'll now read that one. Um, so this is this is coming directly from Nick Gray, who is the CEO of Eagle Dynamics. Uh, following the message published by Ron Zambrano, this was actually, this was only about three hours later, so he got on this pretty quick, uh, of Rasbam Simulations, we believe that it is ne necessary to rectify some of the unfounded allegations and to reassure the community that everything is being done to resolve the current situation promptly and for the benefit of all concerned. Uh, without entering into the details of matters that are confidential to the parties, we firmly reject the allegations that the current disagreement between Eagle Dynamics and Rasbam Simulations would be as stated by Rasbam Rasbam due to circumstances completely beyond our control, and that it is a situation that Rasbam simulations did not seek. On the contrary, the current disagreement is the result of improper actions that have been taken by Rasbam simulations, in breach of its contractual obligations towards our company and of our legally protected IP rights, and for which we are seeking a reasonable and forward-looking commercial outcome rather than entertaining legal claims. We very much regret that Ron Zambrano has decided without even pre-advising us to make these disparaging public statements, and more importantly, to take the customers of the Rasbam developed aircraft as leverage in the discussions with us. Please rest assured we are addressing the situation with the utmost attention and constructiveness. Many thanks and kind regards, Nick Gray. So, that is the drama. A very, very exciting, uh, perhaps too exciting situation. Um, I guess, you know, you know for, for my part, um, you know, I'd just like to say that this is bad for everybody involved. You know, this this feels to me like it's it's bad for, for, for DCS and bad for the community. Uh, and I, I hope that it is resolved quite soon. I reached out to both Rasbam and Eagle Dynamics, um, just in case they would like to make any further comments before... Uh, the stream. Uh, they both declined to make further comments, but they both said that they are committed to resolving this. Um, so it, it seems that both parties very, very much want this problem to go away. So that's very, very good. Uh, and I can only imagine that uh, you know work is being <laughs> work is being made on both sides to to come to some kind of a some kind of an agreement as soon as possible. Stuart McLean, allegations from both sides, but no actual examples shown by either side. If if you, I, I don't want to go too much into uh, other comments that have been made um, by people. Uh, <laughs> there have been a bunch of comments made on on Reddit. Some of them by Rasbam. Um, I, I guess you would call them members of the Rasbam team. Uh, some of them, I guess, are direct employees. Some of them are contractors. Um, there has been some more detail posted there. However, it's all kind of single source stuff. And because of that, I don't really want to start diving into it. But uh, I think at the core, very, very clearly, uh, you know, Rasbam and Eagle Dynamics have a disagreement about something. Uh, you know, they, they they both feel strongly about something, <laughs> some kind of contractual issue. And clearly, um, you know, that there has been some kind of a problem with payments and um, they want to resolve it and then, you know, get the cash flowing again. So, uh, yeah, as you say, no actual examples. Uh, Bewilder Beast, never nice when mummy and daddy fight. Yeah. John Blur, now reread Nick's message in his kindly vicar voice. <laughs> I In my head, I was doing that. I was actually doing that. Uh, Yogi, welcome to the stream. Uh, Stuart McLean, he said what she said. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. Orleans Junkie. I'm being good. Pink Floyd, remember when I said Razbam had bad PR and you responded that they had no PR. <laughs> yeah, I did say that. I did say that. Yeah, but basically it is just Ron. It's literally just Ron. They don't have PR. Uh, oh, of course, sometimes uh, Alpha, um, you know, he's doing his bit in the in the Discord. Actually, he does a lot of work in the Discord. Um, so Alpha Juliet, big shout out to, to him. He, he does great work. But yes, effectively, Razbam don't have PR. Um, so yeah, that's that's it is what it is. <laughs> so anyway uh, i'm gonna leave that there I, I i don't know if there's much more at this stage that we can say about it because of course there is no detail and and it may well be the case that there never will be any detail uh because this is 
This is a, a contractual thing. Who knows? It could go legal. Um, so it's very, very unlikely that we're going to get more than what we've already seen in these two statements uh, and a bunch of stuff that has been said in Reddit, uh, which I'm not going to repeat here, but you can easily find um, yourself if you would like to take a little look and to read that. It might give you a little bit of additional context. Uh, but yeah, as exciting as it has been, that's all the news that we've had for the past two weeks. I'm really looking forward to the next update. It'll be really cool to see what they're doing with the F-16. Sadly, it's looking very much like we probably won't have any updates for the RASBAM modules, but uh, you know, once this is all resolved, I'm sure those will start flowing again. Uh, and also very, very excited for the Afghan map. Uh, let me know, chat, uh, which, which of you have um, pre-purchased the DCF's uh, Afghan map. And so it is without any further ado that I now begin pimping the VAF, and I've actually hit the wrong button. Uh, the VAF, or the Virtual Air Force, is a virtual online squadron originally started by myself and Dot Chuckles many, many moons ago. Uh, we're generally flying every Tuesday and Thursday at 8pm UK time. Uh, we currently have squadrons for the Harrier, the F-15, the F-16, and the F-18. Uh, we also have general, uh, we have a general fixed wing squadron where you can fly whatever aircraft you would like, and we also have a general helicopter squadron. Uh, where you can also fly various helicopters. Uh, we do sessions where we do training, and we also do sessions where we fly missions together, and uh, we're always looking for more pilots, air traffic controllers, scripters, mission makers, GCI, livery makers, everything. Everybody is welcome, whether you fly with us or not. Uh, we're based in EU time, uh, so you're... Um, yeah, people outside of the EU, you might not find it convenient to fly with us. Uh, but uh, otherwise, everybody is very, very welcome. And you can join the Discord using the link that's in the chat right now. Uh, and it, if you're watching this after the fact, it will be in the show notes below. Um, and it's a cool place to just hang out. You know, we're, we're sometimes just talking about stuff, uh, generally talking about our hobby uh, or even food or, you know, the situation in the world and various other things. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, John Bloor, all I will say is this is a terrible optics for everyone involved and could disparage any future clients and contractors. Yeah, sadly, that that is true. That is true. This, uh, this is not great for anyone. Um, and like I said, I, I spoke to both parties um, kind of informally uh, and the vibe, you know, I, I'm not going to quote anything that they said, uh, but the the vibe that I, I would say that I got from both parties is they want this fixed. Uh, nobody is trying, I don't think, well, I can't say, obviously, I don't know anything, but I, I feel very much like both of them just want this fixed. Um, so here's hoping, here's hoping. Um, John Bloor, I fly a gazelle into a hangar. Does someone in the squadron make me a cup of tea? I actually, I, I, I witnessed you flying a gazelle in a hangar. It was very cool. Uh, very, very cool indeed. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, and thank you very much, Mr. Yeti. Uh, he says, well done, Deepak, very well presented. Uh, I try, I try. Um, you know, the, 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 this is, um, yeah, something that I hope they get sorted. Mark S. Oh, that laugh. <laughs> uh, Mountain Man Simulations. Uh, let's just hope no one ever talks about it again, because the loss of the Mirage, Harrier, Strike Eagle, MiG-19, and South Atlantic map would be kind of crushing. Agreed. Agreed. It would be terrible. It would be terrible. Um, here's hoping. Absolutely agreed. So, uh, yes, that's uh, that's everything that we have for this week. I've been Deepak. Every Saturday at 6.30pm UK time, I post a new video um, in my tutorial series. Currently, that tutorial tu tu tutorial series is all about the F-15E Strike Eagle. Um, next week, I'm going to do a video about the uh, AMRAM, employing the AMRAM. That's always followed by the DCS News which just happens to be this thing, what you're watching right now. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe, like, and comment. Your support has been amazing over the last couple of years, and I'm really, really happy with the way the, the channel is growing. Thank you very much indeed. If you would like to further support the channel, you have the option of joining Deep Hacks Ground Crew and paying a small monthly fee, about the cost of a cup of coffee, uh, to help me produce these videos. I really appreciate those of you who have already done so. Click the Join button below if you'd like to join them, but big shout-out out to Auto Thrust Blue, Byron Farrow, Storm Kimbari, Channel Wright, Jar Walker, Chandler Hedgevald, Griff Nizzle, Mr. Yeti, Bread, Tier Zero, Sean I am 81, Charts, John Bloor, Tea Kettle Barbecue, Whiskey Dale, Stuart McLean, Frantic Stone, AB, Tog, Ryan McGee, 
Pink Floyd, Paul Dillon, Colin Kelly, Mark S, Mangash, Springer 1-1, uh, Bacon Bomb, that sounds delicious, uh, <laughs> Nor, Paul Cope, Frederick Laestrum, uh, Mike Delta, Matt, Redcoat841, Stiggy Wiggy, Isaid Peer, and Eric Johnson. Thank you very much, everybody. Um... Pink Floyd, do you feel confident making purchases before this is worked out? Um, don't know. Um, honestly, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Um, yeah. Mr. Yeti, I've held off Afghan because of this. Yeah. Um, I don't know what to say, guys. Um, I would be careful. I would be careful, definitely. Um I would definitely be careful. I will, you know, I, I pre-purchase everything. I will still make purchases. But would I recommend that all of you go out and, and spend your money right now before we know what's happening? Maybe not. Maybe I wouldn't recommend that. Um, yeah, just saying. But yes, please, please. <laughs> Face says it all. <laughs> exactly. Um, please, though, you can support me. I'm not going anywhere. So subscribe, like, and comment. Join Deepak's ground crew. You can even uh, donate directly to me in chat if you want. Uh, you don't have to do that. You know, all you have to do is subscribe. That's the only thing that I ask. Uh, only a small percentage of people are subscribed to the channel. It really, really helps me with the algorithm. So if you can press that button, it doesn't cost you anything. I would really appreciate it. But thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, all of you who watch the videos, whether live or after the fact. Those of you who subscribe, those of you who hit the thumbs up, the ground crew, obviously. Uh, thank you to all of you. You're fantastic. So that's been everything for this week. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Fly safe, and I'll see you all next time. Ta-ta.